Hello again and welcome back. So in the past three videos, we've looked at how to perform web scraping by looking at HTML and by using two different very powerful libraries in Python. Those are requests and beautiful soup. In this video, I want to uh, turn away from web scraping and start talking about uh, how, in, how we should think about storing data in Python. Now, if you remember some of the earlier lectures, I talked about storing data in Python in different ways by constructing different kinds of objects, like a string, like an integer, like a float, uh, and then making that data relational in lists, tuples, and dictionaries. In this video, I'm not going to be speaking about that. That's how you store data in, in a Python script in itself. When you're working with Python in any DH application, you are almost never going to store your data in a Python script. And the reason for that is actually quite simple. Storing data in a Python script is kind of pointless. It takes up a whole lot of code space and I mean, you can do it, but there's better ways to do it. You're better off storing your data outside of Python and using Python to actually interact with that data um, as a script. In other words, using Python to not be the thing that stores data, but the thing that interacts with that data. And that's the proper way to use Python in a DH project. There might be an instance where you need to store a list in an actual script. Um, I've done that once or twice before, but for the most part, you're going to be interacting with data outside of Python. And I've given you some of the tools already for how to do this with text files, with XML or with uh, Excel files. And I'm going to be talking in two videos about how to do this with XML files, my personal favorite, and also how to use that data and store it in Python's uh, temporary memory uh, in, a, in something called pandas, which is kind of like a Pythonic version of Excel. So that's going to be what we do over the course of the next four videos. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the benefits of using a text file to store data. Uh, for Python to analyze, when you should do it, and when you should consider using something maybe a little different. So what are the benefits of a text file? If we look here, we see a text file have open. This is the one that we created in our last video when we stripped all this data from Wikipedia. The benefits of a text file are, are many. The chief one is, is that they are very inexpensive. And by that, I mean that Python can analyze a text file with very little memory uh, being used. Text files are small. They are, uh, the data that's contained is not complicated, meaning there's no pictures. So there's nothing like that to actually try to process. Uh, it's not going through and analyzing something as complex as the HTML code behind a Word document, nor is it analyzing the complexity of a spreadsheet like Excel. And because of that, Python is able to work very, very quickly and very efficiently with text files. The way in which I use text files in my DH projects is to store precisely what you might think, texts. I use them as a way to, um, to store long, long texts that I work with, be them letters, uh, be, it, uh, be it some kind of novel if you come across that, be it uh, a treatise, whatever. I store these as individual text files so that I can call them and process them individually and analyze them very quickly and very lightly in Python. And when I'm doing this, when I'm calling the text file data, I'm oftentimes performing either targeted searches to see if a specific a word appears, or I'm taking that data and moving it into something that's more nuanced. Like I'm extracting uh, specific keywords and putting them in an Excel spreadsheet, or I'm extracting the entire text itself and transforming it into an XML file which is going to, I'm going to talk about that in lecture number 24. Um, but really text files are really good for storing large quantities of data that can be called quickly. And in Python, the way in which you're going to call data uh, from a text file is, well, there's a few different ways. The first way is you can go through and read each individual line with that read lines function that we've seen in past videos. And when you do this, you are going to read each individual line in a text file individually. And what you're going to do is you can store your data in a couple different ways. You can store it by saying like a name, comma, an age, comma, and a date. And you can say, uh, you can do this. This is called uh, CSV, comma separated values. 
uh, column of value separation. I can't remember. I always get the CSV and CVS confused in my head. Um, but it's a way to delineate uh, bits of data within a single line. And then what you can do is you can do the same thing with the next person, the next age, and the next uh, date, and you can kind of store large quantities of data in this way. It's less expensive than Excel, but it's less powerful than Excel, and it's much easier to make mistakes because if you forget one comma, it'll break the whole thing. So I don't usually recommend storing data in a text file if you're structuring it in this manner. You're better off using Excel and you're better off using XML. The other way you can store data is by each individual line. So let's say you have a list of just names. So you're only gonna be dealing with names. You have just name after name after name after name. You don't need any other data. So this is nice because each line is a new piece of data. So you don't have to go to Excel. You don't have to use the expensive resources of Excel. You can use just um, just pi, uh, just a text file and just delineate everything by a single line. And in fact, when I was working with, um, let me pull this up here, when I worked with scripture in lecture number 15, that's exactly what I did. In my actual DH project where I um, have been developing a neural network for analyzing and identifying scriptural uh, references, allusions, and quotes, uh, I actually do just that. I process everything initially as a text file. Now, later on, I'm gonna be storing all this data uh, as XML files, but initially I was working with it as strictly a text file because I could break it down very consistently and very easily because each line was a new line of scripture. And once again, like I said in the past video, even though you see these asterisks, that does not mean that it's a new line. It means that simply it's being wrapped around. So that's one of the ways in which you can also use text files is to iterate line by line and each line being a separate block of data that's somehow relational. And in this case, this is all the same thing. So it's Genesis, the book, the chapter, the verse, and all of that that corresponds to the actual text of the verse. So these are some of the ways in which you might want to store your data as a text file for Python to analyze. But text files, although they are very useful and very lightweight, they aren't very nuanced. For example, I can't, uh, it'd be very difficult to keep on using commas to separate values in a text file. For that, you're better off using Excel. So if you have um, data that has tons of attributes, let's say 15, 20 attributes, you're far better off storing that in Excel. Even though it's more expensive, it's going to be easier to handle and it's going to be easier to process. Uh, and it's going to be a lot easier to keep consistent. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video, is when you should start thinking about using Excel to store your data. So that's all for right now on text files.